Hi, we're starting a new section, pump head calculations. Now this section lines up to your content in your third class B1 chapter 13. So we're jumping away from our A section and we're across to 13. And this is, I, I would consider to be a continuation of what we've just worked at. So we talked about fluid mechanics where we talked about fluid properties, pressure at depth, we then looked at fluids in motion, so we talked about uh, volumetric flow, and we introduced Bernoulli's equation. Okay. Pump head calculations is where we continue from there. Okay. So just before we get going any further, let's just do a quick review. We talked about hydrostatic pressure in that first section, and what we saw was that the hydrostatic pressure was really created by the weight of all of the fluid pressing down onto something. So we have this pressure that is always acting at depth within a fluid. And we saw we had an equation for that. So rho gh uh, was pressure. So rho being the density, g being the gravity, and h being the depth of the fluid. So that was our equation that we used to describe pressure at depth. And we saw that the deeper we went into a fluid, the higher the pressure. Okay, so we had a few ways that we were calculating density in this course. So first way that we had was we said, all right, if we have density of cold water, it's going to be about a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. So we use that approach at the start of the course. If we had water, we just consider it to be a thousand. However, we understood that density changes with temperature. And so then we had a second approach, which we started using, which was to use a table to find density. So if we have a table, uh, something like this, uh, and we use that to find our density. So for instance, when we wanted to find density at 25 degrees, we would just use that table and we could see that our density for water at 25 degrees was 997. And then our units for that was kilograms per cubic meter, which was our standard unit for density. Okay, we have a new approach that we're gonna uh, introduce, which is how do we do this when we don't have that table available? So the tool that we have available to us in our academic supplement is our steam tables. And we can use data from our steam tables in order to calculate density, although it's a little more complicated than the last few ways that we did that. So here's an example of steam table content. We have a table number two, which is our saturated steam table, and it's our temperature-based steam table. And inside of this table, we have a whole bunch of data related to saturated water or saturated steam. Okay, let's take a look at this table in a little more detail. So I have a column that's going to be important to me, which is my saturated liquid column. And it's identified as VF in the, in the column. And I have a bunch of numbers there. Now, these are what I'm going to use to calculate density. But if we look at these numbers, uh, they don't really match up to what we expect density to be. At zero degrees or five degrees for our temperature, we expect our density to be about a thousand. Uh, but we have about one right now. We can also see in this table that as it gets hotter, the specific volume tends to increase. Um, and we generally expect our density to go down. So th that something's not quite right with these numbers as they're presented. So we have to be careful with what we see in the table. Okay, so first of all, what we see, there's a specific volume, uh, not a density, a specific volume uh, for saturated liquid at each temperature. So if we look at specific volume in more detail, what we can see is that we have values for our VF, and they don't quite match up to density. Um, in fact, they're the inverse. So if I wanted to find density, what I do is I would take one and then divide it by the VF values. So we'll do that in just a second. 
before I move off, just one other thing to note on this table. Um, one thing that's interesting is if we pressurize water, right, we can raise the boiling point to above 100 degrees. So it's possible for us to have liquid water that is hotter than 100 degrees. And we have in this table the ability to see densities uh, or calculate densities for water that are hotter than 100 degrees. So that's fairly helpful to us if we have pressurized water systems uh, dealing with hot water. Um, th there's a potential that we could have hotter than 100 degrees. Okay. One thing we have to just be careful of when we're figuring out our units, okay, and our calculation from converting specific volume to density, um, we have this little table or this little um, bit of information on the very first page of your steam tables in the supplement. And what it says is that the, the V value, specific volume, is measured in cubic centimeters per gram, although that's kind of ugly to, to deal with, um, or else what we have is times 10 to the negative 3 cubic meters per kilogram. Okay, so we have a little conversion that we have to, to worry about so that that value, the, the you know, 1.00036 or whatever it might be, um, is measured in equivalent units that we're going to use for our density. Okay, so let's work together and calculate density of water at 40 degrees Celsius. Okay, so first thing I have is I've got my property tables and I have my specific volume. And if I want to find at 40 degrees Celsius, uh, I'm going to scan across my, my property tables and I'm going to be able to get a value here for my specific volume. Okay, I want to be careful that I've got the saturated liquid, all right, not the saturated vapor. So I have my saturated liquid and um, I got to figure out what my density is. Now we know that the, the density of water is roughly a thousand and it's going to be maybe a little bit less as I get hotter. So that gives me at least a ballpark so that I know I'm on track with my answer. So first thing I'm going to do is just get my units correct. So my VF is equal to 1.0078. Now that would be grams per or cubic centimeters per gram. So, uh, but I'm going to use it with the form where they say times 10 to the negative three cubic meters per kilogram. Okay, so I could convert that so I could multiply it by the 10 to the negative three and I get like 0.00, uh, you know, etc. cetera um, as my value for VF or else I could just leave it in the scientific notation form. Um, I'm going to leave it in the scientific notation form. Um, so I know that my density is equal to one over VF. So one over 1.0078 times 10 to the negative three and units wise cubic meters per kilogram. And so if I punch that into my calculator, uh, one divided by 1.0078 to the exponent negative three, uh, what I get is a value of 992 point, uh, I guess two six and uh, units on the bottom, so meters cubed is going to stay on the bottom, kilograms going to come up to the top, and I've got kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, it, it makes sense to me. I'm just a little bit less than a thousand, so I think that I'm in the right ballpark for that value for my density. And, and so that's how we can use the steam tables in order to find density um, if we're asked for a question like this on a 3A1. Uh, or sorry, 3B1 uh, type exam where the water temperature makes a difference and you need to know your density. Okay, so a little more complicated than what we did at the early stages of this course, but uh, we just have sort of been building our way to that point.
Okay, so one other uh, little bit that we've sort of already covered before, but we'll just expand on a little bit, is a term called equivalent head. So when we talk about a head, what we talk about is really kind of a, a measure of energy that's in a fluid, um, just not expressed as energy, but as an equivalent height that the fluid column may go to. Um, and we've seen that in action in the lab a little bit, so we can see sort of the relationship between the height of a fluid column and the energy in that column. So how, how we get equivalent head? Well, we have our equation that we have been using up to this point. Pressure is equal to rho gh, so that's our pressure at depth equation. And if we rearrange that, what we get is h, our head, is equal to pressure divided by the density and divide it by gravity. Okay, and we've, we've used this up, up to this point, so this shouldn't be something that's completely new. Okay, let's do an example problem using equivalent head. So the pressure at the discharge of a pump is 300 kPa. The pump is just discharging water at 50 degrees Celsius. What is the equivalent head in meters? Okay, so if we're gonna solve for our equivalent head, um, head is going to be pressure divided by rho g. Um, so we're going to need to know a couple things. First of all, we're going to need to know our pressure. And from the problem, we have a pressure equal to 300 kPa. Um, we got to remember, like we did back in the previous section, we got to be very careful with our units. So in this case, we don't want units of kPa. We want to put those into our base units, 300,000 pascals. Pump is just charging water at 50 degrees Celsius. So in order to figure that out, we're going to have to go back to one of those tables and get our VF value. So let's just backtrack a little bit through our slide deck. All right, so um, back here we can we can figure that out or get our value. So we have a value for VF at 50 degrees, 1.0121. So VF is equal to 1.0121. Um, and then we always have to remember times 10 to the negative 3. It's not listed on that sheet or the table anywhere other than the very first page. Um, and that is in meters cubed per kilogram. So my density is equal to 1 over Vf. So 1 divided by 1.0121 to the exponent negative 3 uh, gives me a density of 988.0. Um, and that is in kilograms per cubic meter. Um, the last thing that I need is gravity, and we know that gravity is going to be 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, so I can throw all that into my equation for my head. So I have 300,000 pascals divided by my density 988.0 and then I also have 9.81 um, I guess meters per second squared and over here would be um, kilograms per cubic meter and that gives me a value of h 300,000 divided by 988 divided by 9.81. And what I get in this case would be a equivalent head of 30.95 meters. And essentially what that's saying is if I took all the pressure that was built up inside of that discharge of the pump, uh, I could produce a column of water that was almost 31 meters high. Okay, so that's that's the idea of equivalent head and it's a way for us to sort of measure visually what the height or energy level of a fluid might be. Okay, so you have some questions to work on. 
for this first portion, and then uh, we'll move on once you've done that to section number two of this chapter, where we look at some of the pump definitions and how they relate to pumping systems, so different heights and, and what those definitions are.